Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, you know, what's wrong is we have this monstrosity of a tax code that costs two to $300 billion a year to comply with. I mean, I, I'll, I'll go on the record. I'd like to scrap the entire thing, rebuild a tax system, pretty basic principles. Raise the revenue you need, do no economic harm. We need to stop socially and economically engineering through the tax code, but we're a long ways from that. Right now, we're just trying to nibble around the edges. But let, let me start with the basic question. Um, what is the maximum marginal tax rate that each one of you thinks the federal government should charge on the next dollar of income? Maximum marginal tax rate, the Professor. The um, maximum marginal tax rate uh, that I would be comfortable with would be about 45%. That's what it is in, okay. in the UK now. Good. Dr. Bernstein. Well, it's a, a good time to ask that question because there's recently been uh, research by scholars in the field. There's pa uh, recent papers by Peter Diamond and Emmanuel Sayers that I commend Just you. Give me a number. Yeah. Okay. So they come up with numbers that are way above what Professor yeah, well, Kleinbart said. I'm asking said. you. 60, 70 percent. I'm more comfortable 45, 55 in that range. Okay. So, okay. Uh, Dr. Roberts. Uh, <clears throat> I don't have an answer for you, but I would say that. Um, if government were the size it should be, meaning if government only did the things that it does better than the private sector, I think it would be a fraction of its current size. And the goal of the tax system is not to maximize how much revenue we create, which a lot of these academic exercises are about how big could it be and we'd still collect a lot of money. That's not my goal. My goal would be what's the right size of government? And the answer to that is what government does well, particularly what it does better than the private sector. And then I would have a fairly flat tax system with minimal deductions and minimize that compliance cost. And my guess is that that number is somewhere in the 10 to 20% range for the tax rate. And I would have a broad base rather than a system we have now where millions of Americans pay zero in income tax. And because they think their payroll tax is saved for them for their retirement, they see an extra government spending as being a free lunch. And that's a destructive political incentive. I, I just kind of have a common sense notion that the way you really strengthen the middle class is have a strong you know, economy, and you have businesses that have the incentive to risk their capital. And I guess I'm just kind of scratching my head when you got a top federal tax rate of 40 to 50 percent. Uh, you're not allowing that entrepreneur, that risk taker, you know, much in, from standpoint of keeping the fruits of their labor. But l let me just, uh, uh, Professor Kilt, uh, Kleinbard, you mentioned that we obviously have a revenue problem. Uh, the fact is, in, in the latest CBO estimate, the spending over 10 years is 22.1 percent, which is 1.9 points higher than the 50-year average uh, up to 2007, whereas revenue is 18.9, which is 0.8 points higher than the 18.1 percent. So the, the, the problem is, is we are just spending a lot more than we ever did. So I would just dispute that we have a, a, a tax a problem. And, and here's my point, is in 68 years, from 1944 to the present time, only 10 times have we generated revenue that exceeded 19% of GDP, three times over 20%. I mean, what, what makes you think that we can actually generate, no matter what the top marginal tax rate is? By the way, the top marginal tax rate during that period was 91%, and then 70%, and 50%. I mean, what makes anybody think that we can actually generate more than that 18.1%? So, oh, I have a couple of answers to you. So, uh, we know we can generate more. We have generated more. We know that only infrequently, because you've chosen to reduce rates. If you, in fact, if you look at uh, uh, at our OECD peer countries, we're the lowest taxed country. We're the best economy in the world. We're the most flexible, robust co economy in the world. But we have we have the lowest rates. Those two are not necessarily causative, but they do indicate that we can have a tiny bit higher rate, a 21 percent rate without uh, destroying uh, let, let, let me ask a question I asked during the last budget hearing, because you're, you're all economists, and, and you know, maybe you can answer this question. Do either any of you know of a tax increase that is going to promote economic growth, or that will make us more competitive globally? Is yeah. there one exists? Sure. Yeah. I can, I can, well, you go ahead, Chair. Well, I was just going to say, um, it, it, not an increase in tax rates, necessarily, but an increase in precisely the kinds of uh, base issues and revenue issues we're talking about today. By lowering uh, tax, by, by repealing, restructuring, 
lowering tax expenditures that distort economic behavior in ways way we've, we've discussed. They distort what people buy, they distort what people invest in, they distort where people set up their companies. Those would be both efficiency enhancing, which I know you like because of, the, uh, of where your just, question just is coming, real quick. and revenue. It was interesting, I saw Joe Scarborough uh, debating and they were, uh, uh, what's uh, Paul Krugman, and they—they they were basically saying that one dollar spent in the private sector is the same as a dollar spent in the public sector. Do you, do you actually believe that? Do you, do you really believe that government is as efficient in allocator capital as the private sector when it comes to investment? I, mean, I don't. You, take, you don't. No. And anybody think government is, is, is a good allocator of cap capital? I, I think the government is a terrific allocator of capital in those places where markets fail. And markets exactly. fail all the time. It is not the case that markets are perfect. Markets fail in education. Oh. Markets fail in infrastructure. And those are the kinds of things that, in fact, we finance through government. We are the lowest tax country in the world of any OECD country. It cannot be the case that we cannot afford a little bit more revenue to pay for the existing level of spending. The problem with spending that the CBO uh, projects is health care. And until the Congress of the United States tackles health care in a much more comprehensive way, we're going to need to raise more well, taxes. That's because government pays 50% of it. Dr. Roberts, real quick. Yeah, I was just going to say, um, we are the lowest uh, of the OECD com countries, but of course, a lot of our taxes are hidden because we have promised to raise taxes tomorrow, which is what borrowing does. And my vet, I follow Milton Friedman's rule, which is uh, there's only two kinds of taxes, taxes today and t two ways to finance government, taxes today and taxes tomorrow. Borrowing is just a way of, of hiding that fact. I don't want to be like Norway. I don't want to be like Greece. I don't think we should emulate them. And um, I think that's the wrong path to go. Thank you.